In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ was broken that we may become one as human race. You are listening to Easter Tridium Devotions with Father Eustace Siame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. By God's word at last my sin I learned, then I trembled at the law I spurned. It is Friday, the 29th of March, 2024. Good Friday! You know, I like the Kiswahili word for Friday because here it applies properly. Ijuma! Juma Mosi, Juma Piri, Juma Tatu, Juma Ne, Juma Tano, Alamis. Ijuma! The day! And for us, the day is today. Good Friday, the day we meditate on the Paschal Mysteries, the day we acclaim, we confess that Jesus Christ is our Passover, the one who sacrificed himself for our own redemption. Indeed, today, is the day Ijuma and we want to celebrate this Ijuma the good Ijuma the good Friday with all solemnity participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following deliberate members Hilary John celebrating her birthday tomorrow from Freetown Sierra Leone text for us the first reading Mary Majova from Manchester, United Kingdom, who celebrated her birthday yesterday, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And taking for us the second reading is Emily Njeri from Nairobi, Kenya, as she celebrates her birthday today. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. He was wounded for our transgressions. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13 to 53, verse 12. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so mad beyond human semblance. And his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he subtle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they shall see. And that which they have not heard, they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. 
we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before his shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and he made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when he makes himself an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yes, he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 31, verses 2 and 6, 12 to 13, 15 to 16, 17 and 25. The response is taken from Luke chapter 23, verse 46b. And the response is, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Father, into your hands. I commit my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, set me free. Into your hands, I command my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands. I commit my spirit. Because of all my foes, I have become a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbors and of fear to my friends. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I am forgotten like someone dead and have become like a broken vessel. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My lot is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. All who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16, chapter 5, verse 7 to 9. Brethren, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sinning. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him 
who was able to save him from death, and he was hard of his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation comes from Philippians chapter 2, verse 8b and 9. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Three readings as usual have been taken on this day, but we are not reading the gospel because of its length. And I know those of us who will love an opportunity to go for the service of the cross this afternoon, you will be exposed to the full length of the Gospel of St. John, which is chapter 18, verse 1 to chapter 19, verse 42. Two full chapters. The first reading was taken from Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13 to chapter 53, verse 12, about the fourth song of the servant of Yahweh, the servant of God. This servant of God who accepts suffering and who answers to the question constantly asked, can a good man suffer? Is it possible for someone who lives in the path of God to go through pain? Yes, it is possible. Jesus did. So if a good man can go through pain, it is possible for any of us, anyone who claims to be good to go through pain. Good Friday helps us to learn to accept the sufferings that we go through. And you know what? We are told he suffered for what he did not do, for the transgressions of others. To just explain to us, it is possible to suffer for what you did not do. Yes. It is possible to go in jail for a crime you have not committed. And we see so many people in incarceration who have never done anything wrong. But somebody else is enjoying his life who would have been in jail. And an innocent person is there suffering. Yes, it is possible. We have seen people who, because of the marriage they found themselves in, end up having a disease that becomes terminal because it has been a sexually transmitted disease, and they suffer for things they never did. They have been faithful to their own spouses, but they end up suffering for what they did not do. Oh yes, we do have such. And this explains to us that it is possible to suffer for something that you never did, for something that somebody else did. This is a very prophetic message found in the first reading of today. And the same misfortune, the same pain, the same suffering ends up being an advantage for those who inflicted it on this 
servant of God. Wow. And that servant of God becomes Jesus Christ himself. Whose cross answers all these questions. Yes, it is possible to suffer for what you did not do. Yes, it is possible to suffer for the sins of somebody else. We see this happening. We see somebody losing a job because another person stole the money. Not this one who has lost the job. We see these things happening. And so Christ comes to us, the thieves who stole the money who have done all sorts of evil things and takes our place. He takes our place and we are reading the gospel of St. John where John wants to present a Jesus who was ready to take our place, who knew exactly what he wanted to do and he knew How it is possible for somebody to suffer for something that the person did not do. He is in control of everything. And we see him being arrested there. And before that arrest, he shows that he is God. He is having all the powers to do away with that suffering, but he does not use those powers for that reason. He has the power to do away with that suffering, but no, he does not use that power to eliminate suffering. He uses the power to show these people that no matter how powerful you may be, you will end up in death. That there is nothing special about being human. There is nothing special about having this body. And so he asked them, whom do you seek? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. He said to them, I am he. He claims to be he. He claims to be the I am. And by hearing the I am he, They drew back and fell to the ground because they were face to face with God. They were face to face with the architect of the universe. Psalm 9 verse 4, Psalm 27 verse 2. That when my adversaries come my way, it is they who stumble and fall. I cannot stumble and fall. I decide. Three times they ask him so, and three times they end up falling. He is the one in charge, and he is the one who is going on that cross to give up the ghost. We see him being examined by the high priest, and he has all the confidence. We see him being tried by Pilate, and he has all the confidence there. And Pilate just fails to release him. He hands him over to them to be crucified. We see him being crucified. We see him dying and dying honorably. He did not allow anyone to touch his soul, but he gave up the ghost. He is the one who gives up the ghost, but before giving up the ghost, He has to speak the words. It is finished. Tetelestai. It is consummated. I have done it all. The salvation of humanity has been achieved. Now I leave it in the hands of human beings to accept that salvation. It is done. As I thirst for the salvation of humanity. That thirst has been quenched, and so it is finished. It is done with the vinegar that represents the sins of humanity. The vinegar that is not sweet at all, it is sour because sins are sour. And he takes up that and he says, I'm done. I have taken up the sinful humanity. Now I am done. I can now give up the ghost. I can now hand over the ghost. Oh, on that cross we see the greatest love of all. 
On that cross we see new relationships being built because on that cross we see John, the beloved disciple, being given a mother. Behold your mother being given Mary in that moment of pain. Mary comes to us. Mother Mary comes to us when we are in confusion, when we are in pain. Mother Mary is given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold your mother. When we find ourselves isolated, when we find ourselves in confusion, we find ourselves in depression. Jesus comes to us and says, behold your mother, take her home. She understands suffering. She understands pain. Take her home. It is only in the gospel of John that the role of Mary is seen at the glorification of Jesus. Oh yes, she's a mother given to us at the glorification of Jesus because Jesus explains to us in the gospel of John that his glorification is on the cross. We are celebrating today the glorification of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the three readings that we have, we see the three aspects of Jesus outlined very very well remember in the gospel of john there is interrogation between pilate and jesus pilate asks him are you the king of the jews you have said so you have said it i'm not the one saying you said so are you the king of the jews in your question is an answer i am i'm the king of the jews jesus is king the first reading presents to us the prophetic suffering servant. The second reading presents to us the great high priest who has entered once and for all that sanctuary. And the gospel presents to us the triumphant king. These are the three faces of Jesus, our Passover. He is the suffering prophet. He is the great high priest. He is the triumphant king. And we participate through our own baptism in the prophetic ministry of the suffering servant and in the priesthood of the great high priest and in the triumphant kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we become prophets, as shown in the first reading of today. A prophet is one ready to suffer even for things he did not do so that others may gain life. We become priests, as shown in the second reading of today. Men and women ready to sacrifice for the sake of others. We become triumphant queens and kings through the wars that we fight. The wars on Calvary throughout our lives without giving up on our faith. So that at the end of our lives, we may say with St. Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the rest. And what awaits me is the crown of righteousness. Second Timothy. Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 to 8. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Good Friday to you. Thanks be to God. Now I give to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own Him as my King. Now my rapture so can only sing of Salvation's plan, all oh, the grace that brought it down.